Okay, thanks for sticking with me, all those that have. Um, I've had a weekend away, um, so I'm playing a bit of catch-up myself. Um, Monday, um, there were lots of big battles to get through, which you'll be seeing soon. Um, so today is my day for uploading everything. So I'm, I'm going back a little bit in, in time with these now, because lots and lots seems to have happened since. Anyway, we're sorting out what's uh, what's happening with the universities and colleges, because we had one there that, that wasn't um, uh, actually researching anything anymore. So we're getting the... Um, uh, advanced irrigation instead of the seed, seed planting uh, drill because it enables um, uh, wine estates. This is Empire Total War. United Provinces, of course, played on hard. Um, uh, just for those who um, haven't been following the series, this is number 128. And like I say, we're in the summer of 1734. This is a spy that was raised on the, um, the, the island, the Windward Islands. A um, bit of a useless place, but I've been recruiting some more ships here, or constructing more ships, so that um, I'm available for, as I showed you in the previous video, this massive fleet that the, uh, the Marathas seem to have, and I'm expecting them to go for the weak point. Uh, what you have to do in this uh, campaign is just to look for all your weakest points and expect an enemy to go for them at any one time. If you're very, very clever, then you'll have enough money in the bank to cope with any trade that's taken away from it or whatever as well. But unfortunately, I tend to work on <laughs> a bit of a shoestring. That doesn't seem to be the case with me. But anyway, this is the blockade all the way down the coast of Guyana. That's French Guyana and Dutch Guyana. Um, if you remember, the um, Maratha fleets are unable to land... Um, in anywhere where, well, they're unable to do an amphibious landing, un unable to land troops on an area um, that's controlled or within the zone of control of my own fleet. So I'm moving that brig from the Windward Islands, that's what you've just been looking at there. Um, recruiting a couple of brigs as well. We're over in Europe now. Just checking what we can do over here. We've got... Um, a spy over here. If you remember, we, well, they call them rakes actually, and rakes can spy and they can assassinate as well. I'm just working out what I can do with him. As you remember, or you might have seen, there are quite a few gentlemen in our uh, Spanish gentlemen, um, which are nothing better than thieves, basically, as far as the game goes, um, who are stealing my research inside my school there in Amsterdam. There are three of them there, you see, so we're going to go for the easier one, uh, build up a bit of experience then, you see, for when we go for the harder ones. We've never had a lot of luck with um, assassinations, but we'll, we'll keep going. Okay, this is the, the main focus at the moment of our, our attack. We, we've had attacks in Americas, we've had attacks in, the, in Europe as well. Now we're looking at um, attacks over here in, uh, in India. You look over there at the other income, you know, what we're getting at the moment. I'm looking at ways that we can increase income. I've got a large fleet in there. If you remember, we were looking over to the north coast of India just to see what, what we could see up there, see if there was anything, any big fleets around or anything. You know, I just can't see anything at all. So. Anyhow, that's a couple of ships that he brought down from the north. I don't understand if he's got such a massive fleet as the prestige table showed us on the previous um, uh, videos. Um, why he's sending such useless ships to fight me. Uh, so I'm sending the ones that got split, you know, the ones that uh, went into Salon to be uh, replenished or repaired or whatever. I'll send them after those couple of ships there. I've got decent quality ships there. These are the ones, if you remember, that I brought over from Europe. I haven't started constructing decent ships yet in India. Um, I've got a, a port that I've built ready to do so, but these are the ones that I brought over from uh, from Europe. Uh, this is my... Um, my fleet, four ships, I've put them all into a grouping and in line um, and you can just see in the background there his fleet's arriving well I say arriving um, uh, approaching there's only a couple of them, we'll take a look at those and see what they are, there you go, that's just a sloop, that one there in the front I'm not sure if that's a sloop or a brig at the back there Anyhow, the main focus of this is going to be with such big hitters, which we've got here, our ships, is to um, demast them. The sloop's much quicker than our ships. He could get away. Uh, of course, the main thing I need is money in this game, so, as you know, I want to capture the ships. So I've got all my boats on chain shot at the moment. I'll sometimes, by the way, the head ship, this first one here, I'll sometimes... Um, 
uh, deactivate automatic fire on that. You see how his back ship there has fired on my second ship? You just saw it flying past there. Well, that's what mine would be doing now. It would be shooting out his back ship right now. So sometimes I will disable the fire of that front ship um, so that... Um, I haven't done that on this occasion, of course. But so that uh, when we get close up to this um, second ship, th to the first ship, sorry, um, we've got close up firing. So we're, we're close up firing between on the second and the first ship when we get between the two of them. Yeah. Not always the case, but rather than fire a long distance chain shot, it's better to fire it when you get close up. I think you can imagine how this is going to go. There's going to be a grape, go not a grape, a chain going right in against that sloop sails. Boom! And uh, that's caused a fairly decent amount of damage there already. I uh, just ripped away some of his sails, so that'll slow him down a bit. He's still got the fire to suffer from the um, second ship yet. Again, another big hitter. Here's the same. 18, 20 odd guns, one of 40 odd guns. So basically, whatever he can hit me with, we can hit him with double. Okay, he's just about to be hit for the third time now. Well, it looks like the main mast has gone anyway. There's the main mast, that slowed him down incredibly now. If you remember, um, I haven't got any sort of fast ships um, in this fleet, I haven't got any sloops or anything, so. Um, I really do, t do need to completely deactivate it, or immobilise it. Now that makes that one there sit in the water, literally a sitting duck. And what we can, well, he's not literally a sitting duck, but just as good as. And um, I'm sending one ship down there, that's the back one, um, to get up close to him. I'll go along his stern and just rake him with um, grape shot. Now these three ships here um, are tackling the one that's left. And um, just got to make sure here we don't shoot our own our own ships by shooting across. See, if this one was to turn suddenly, this one at the back, he could shoot straight across his ship, that's the one in the middle, over to mine at the back there. So, in this case of boxing, a little bit clever. Taking off the... You see how I've taken off the automatic fire? Just put it back on again now for this ship. Yeah. Now it's off again now for this ship, ship I'm sorry. So he won't fire now, you see. Otherwise, he could fire straight across and hit my own boat there. Well, I think you can imagine how that went. We just murdered that one and he surrendered, you know, on the chain shot as soon as he couldn't move. So we then went after his um, ship that we'd already immobilised and graped him until he surrendered as well. So that's the end of them. And there'll be a little amount of damage to our ships, but nothing like as much as we're going to get in prize money, or we did get rather in prize money, for those two boats. So it's a nice little gift for us, really, that. The only thing is, the only thing it does do, though, is tie up our ships and keep them north. Uh, sorry, keep them south of India. I really wanted to move them out of the Indian Ocean down here, up into the Arabian Sea, which is further up, where you can see my boats at the top there. And I'm looking to get a bit of a presence there. OK, so what I've done is I've sent the ships that need repair into the, uh, the port there, to get those repaired into my own port, and then I'm going to um, add the ship that hasn't been damaged at all to that uh, northern part, the one in the Arabian Sea. The idea is I'm expecting some kind of attack again. I know I sound paranoid, but from some large um, fleet. Not only that, he, he gets a decent income from that... Um, uh, I think I highlighted it there so you could see the um, trade route. So every ship I've got in there, I know I'm repeating myself, but we take 5% of that trade away. Anyway, here's the end of turn. So we're moving over to the winter of 1734. I've speeded this bit up. Um, gone through all the moves at the turn end from the other nations who don't do very much. We're on to the Marathas, which are obviously important to us at the moment. Ah, now there's a large navy coming over with an army on it, a decent sized army. If that were to land on French or Dutch Guyana, um, then he would easily take both of those away from us, because uh, I've got like one uh, army unit, I don't know what they are, probably depleted as well, in each of those places. So, we're preventing him from getting there. I'll need to sort those ships out afterwards. That will be the next video. Okay, an army is now presenting itself to us again in, uh, in India. I haven't replenished my own troops here, so I need to look into whether I've got enough to be able to take them on. All well, that's for the next video.